Senator Sandy Pappas, thanks for joining us today. It's wonderful to be here. I want to begin with what motivated you to decide that you even wanted to preside over the Senate? I've been interested actually for a long time. Um, it's not a well-known fact, but I ran 10 years ago for the presidency and did not win. So here I am again 10 years later, and this time I was successful. And what do you hope to accomplish in that Well, position? I think, first of all, um, I'd like to put a new face on the Senate. I think it's important that we have women in very prominent roles, especially smiling women. And um, I, uh, I have really three jobs that I see as mine as, a, as the Senate president is, first of all, I preside over the floor sessions, and I do assign the bills. And so to make sure that we go back to our tradition of having um, a fair presiding officer that follows the rules and gives everyone a chance to speak and is courteous and respectful, I think that's going to be very important. Second, um, I have <clears throat> some oversight responsibilities over the administration of the whole Senate. And we have some work there. Uh, we need to enter the 21st century in terms of our human resources. Uh, we need more staff development. We need a health and wellness policy. We need to look at our salary schedules and make sure that they're in line and fair and logical and make sense. And then third, I'm really the face of the Senate. And so um, greeting visitors, uh, external relations. We are hosting two major conferences in the next two years, the Council of State Government's Midwestern Legislative uh, Conference in St. Paul next summer. And I'll be leading the Senate efforts for that hosting uh, responsibility. And then the following year in 2014, we're, we're uh, the site of the National Conference of State Legislators National Convention in Minneapolis, St. Paul. That's about 5,000 visitors. So I think I'm going to be busy. I'm also chairing a committee as well. And we'll get <laughs> in to my that. spare time. Absolutely. <laughs> and we will get to that. But I want to know are you <clears throat> patterning your style after anybody in particular, or is this just kind of a culmination of characteristics that come naturally to you? Well, I, um, in terms of the Senate, uh, I look to uh, former Senator Alan Speer as my role model. Um, he was also a first. He was our uh, first um, Jewish president. I would be the second. And of course, Michelle Fishbach was our first woman president, and I will be the second. But I'll be the first uh, Jewish woman president. In Minnesota, for <laughs> in sure. Minnesota. Uh, uh, na in Minnesota. In Minnesota. No, okay. in Minnesota. Yeah. I want to ask you as well something that always seems to happen is you obviously will have to rule at some point, either in favor or against your own party. So, how do you take a step away and how do you decide? how you're going to rule when the time comes? Well, I make sure that everyone in my caucus and in all the senators understand the rules and read the rules so that they know if they're trying to do something that isn't in the rule book, because uh, we do have Senate rules, that I, they're going to be ruled against. And um, even if I have to give them a little heads up that that I'm not going to rule in their favor, it's not likely I'm going to rule in their favor. We don't know how I'm going to rule until I hear both sides and see the evidence. But I make it, need to make it clear that I'm not going to be doing partisan rulings. You just sound really excited about this, this whole upcoming session. So what are some of your expectations? Well, this is the first time in 22 years we've had what I call unity government, where uh, the governors, the House, and the Senate are all controlled by one party. So, you know, with, um, with that, with power comes much responsibility, and I think that we have an opportunity um, to show the citizens of the state of Minnesota how, um, how government can be well run and that it can be civil and we can be not in gridlock where we have shutdowns and we have um, fights and we have huge ideological differences. So I do think that <clears throat> we will be moderate and we'll be fair, and uh, we might be slow in some ways that people don't want us to be slow, and we might be fast in some ways that people don't want us to be fast, um, depending on the priorities. And of course, the priorities are going to be the budget. And we have, um, I've been, I was a budget chair for many years, and we have had problems with our budget since the late 1990s when we excessively cut taxes. Um, looked like the economic bubble was going to last forever. It was the Clinton years, and everyone was doing well. And we had Jesse Ventura as governor, and there was a, a, a fight over who could cut taxes more, the Democrats, the Republicans, or Jesse Ventura, the independent governor. And we, we went too far. And so I think you're going to see some modest uh, tax increases um, in line with what the governor would like to do. 
and uh, so that we can at least begin to get our budget back on track. We won't, we didn't get into this problem overnight, and we won't be able to solve it overnight. But if over a course, uh, over the next four years, um, we can do that, that needs to be our top priority. And as you mentioned earlier, you're also the chair of the state and local government mm -hmm. committee. So mm -hmm. what are your expectations as far as leading that committee, and how do you meld that in with president of the Senate? Well, my plan is to um, um, mentor leadership on my committee and um, have my committee members take responsibilities because it is really a um, quite a bit of responsibility on top of the president. So not only am I doing state, metro, local government, I'm also doing gambling and veterans affairs. Um, so it's quite a large jurisdiction. In fact, it's not even finalized the jurisdiction, and so it's possible I may shift some of those things, but we'll see. If I need to take on that responsibility, I will, but I'll have, I can set up subcommittees, I can have a strong vice chair to help me in that work, and good staffing. Um, so it, is, it does provide uh, oversight over all the state agency, most of them. And like I said, there'll be some issues around gambling, and there always is around Veterans Affairs, and the Met Council or townships or local government will have some issues. So it's not the most exciting committee, but it's important work that we need to make sure that these state agencies and local agencies are well run. And as you mentioned earlier, it's the first time in 22 years that the legislature and the governor are of the same party. Do you think mm -hmm. the eyes of Minnesota, of, Minnesota, of Minnesota are watching? What do you think their expectations are of this particular legislature? Well, I think a lot of people expect now for us to get things done because we don't have any excuses. We can't say, well, I tried to pass this, but the other party blocked it, or I tried to prevent this, but the other party insisted, whatever. Um, we should be able to get along, and we should show them that Democrats can get along and not have these um, huge ideological differences. But there are differences among us. I mean, I do expect to see some differences over mining and environmental policy, for example, or there might be differences into how fast we should move on some social issues. Um, some people think we should slow down and focus on the budget. Others say, well, we just, you know, had this big amendment fight. We maybe should move a little faster. So there will always be differences. Okay, Madam President, on those words, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And, of course, we hope to get you back during session. We thank appreciate you. It. I'd love to come back. And the biggest important thing is we do want to try to all get along.